Welcome back. In the next part of this lecture, we're going to be looking at functions where it's not just an inside and an outside, where maybe it's a composite of, of three or more things. Um, and that's kind of what we've got going on here with this first function, f of theta. Um, if I were to really write this out to make it clear the layers of insides and outsides, I have sine as the outermost function. Then I've got tangent cubed of 4 theta, which is really tangent of 4 theta that's been cubed. So if we're thinking about sort of order of outside to inside, the outermost function is the sine. The next layer of outermost function is the to the power of 3. Then followed by inside of that, we've got a tangent function. And inside of our tangent, we don't just have theta, we've got 4 theta. So we have a 4 theta that's inside of a tangent, that's inside of a cubing function, that's inside of sine. So that means we're going to, when we find our derivative, work our way from outside to inside, starting with sine, then cubing, then tangent, then 4 theta. So when I find my derivative, the first part will be the outermost function, the derivative of sine, and that is cosine. And then everybody else that hasn't been dealt with will stay as they currently are. So the tangent of 4 theta and the cubed will stay as it is. Okay, next we work on the next level of layer of function, which is the cubing. And so for cubing, the power will come down and the power will get reduced by 1 and everybody inside the cubing function will stay as it is. So tangent of 4 theta will stay as tangent of 4 theta for now. And now we work one more layer inside. Derivative of tangent. Derivative of tangent is secant squared. So I'll have secant squared. And what's inside the tangent will stay inside as it currently is, as 4 theta. So we've dealt with the sine, we've dealt with the cubing, we've dealt with the tangent, and now the dealing with the innermost function, 4 theta. The derivative of 4 theta, 4 times theta, is just 4. And so there we go, we've got a, a fairly large looking function. Um, I'm not really much that I can do to make it look nicer other than maybe take the 4 and the 3 and bring them up to the front. So I'll, I'll do that. We've got 12 cosine of tangent cubed 4 theta times tangent squared 4 theta and times secant squared 4 theta. And there we go. That's our, our first one taken care of. Okay, so let's do another one, shall we? So again, I've got a couple of layers of functions if we're thinking about it. Uh, so I have cotangent as the outermost function. And then inside the cotangent, I've got this x squared plus 7x minus 1 to the power of 4. So that means for what's inside my cotangent function, the power of 4 would be the next layer of what's inside. And inside the power of 4... I have that little polynomial, so that's what's inside of that. I've got three layers of, of functions inside of functions. So I'll start off with my derivative, dy dx, and I'll begin with the outermost function, which is cotangent. Okay, <clears throat> so I know for cotangent, the derivative is cosecant squared, negative cosecant squared, rather. And the inside stuff, the x squared plus 7x minus 1 to the 4, will stay as it is. Next, we deal with the next layer of innermost functions, which is the power of 4. And for that, the power comes down, the power is reduced by 1. And then next, we deal with the next layer of innermost function, the x squared plus 7x minus 1. And for that, the derivative is 2x plus 7. 
And then there's really only one little thing that I could maybe do, and that's just to combine the negative and the 4 and bring that up front. So minus 4 cosecant squared x squared plus 7x minus 1 to the 4 times x squared plus 7x minus 1 cubed times 2x plus 7. And there we go. Now, here's where things get a little exciting. Um, unlike the first couple of examples where it was just chain rule, uh, of course, as you know, you've got other rules that can come back and be used, uh, product rule, a quotient rule. So you might have something like this where it's a quotient, but when we do our derivative of the denominator, that's a function inside of a function, so there'll be a chain rule there. When we do our derivative of the numerator, there's a function inside of a function, so there'll be chain rule there. Um, so that means we'll have chain rule with uh, quotient rule, and you could also have chain rule with some quotient rule and some product rule all together. That's also a possibility. Um, so let's get ourselves started, and let's begin by setting up our quotient rule. For s prime, the derivative, I'll have t squared minus 3 squared squared then the denominator will come up and then I'll do derivative of the numerator and then minus the numerator as it is times the derivative of the denominator and I'll do that filling in now. For the first bracket that I've got, the derivative of the numerator, I've got an outermost function, which is the cubing, and the innermost function, which is the 2t squared plus 1. So dealing with the cubing first, power comes down, power is reduced by 1, and the inside stays as it currently is. Then, derivative of the inside, derivative of that 2t squared plus 1, that's just 4t. And now, for the second bracket that I needed to fill in, that was the derivative of my denominator. And for that, again, it's functions inside of functions. The squaring is the outermost function, so power comes down, power is reduced by 1, the inside stays as it is. And now derivative of the inside, the derivative of t squared minus 3, that's 2t. Okay, so we've got our derivative taken care of. Now here comes the simplifying part. Uh, and this is where you're going to find this is a running theme in products rules and quotient rules as well. A lot of times you'll be able to do some factoring rather than uh, doing expanding. I know for many people they look at this and they think they're going to need to multiply everything together. Uh, but instead maybe think about factoring things. I notice, for example, I have a 4t in the first big fat term and I have a 2 and a 2t. So in other words, I've got a 4t in the next term. Um, so I can take 4t out of both terms in the numerator. I also notice I've got t squared minus 3s. I've got two of them in that first term and I've got one of them in the next. So I can take a t squared minus 3 out of both terms. And then finally, I also notice I've got some 2t squared plus 1s. I've got two of them in the first and three in the second, so I can take out two of them. So I will factor out 2t squared plus 1 squared. And now let's just figure out what's left behind. In my very first term, the t squared minus 3, I had two of them. I took one out, so there's a t squared minus 3 left behind. Uh, there's the 3 that's also there. The 2t squared plus 1 squared got taken out completely, and the 4t also got taken out completely. So 3 and the t squared minus 3, that's all that's left from the first term. For the second big term, t, 2t squared plus 1 cubed, I took out two of them. So there's a 
2t squared plus 1 left behind. The 4t got taken out. The t squared minus 3 got taken out. So that's that. Um, as far as the denominator goes, I have t squared minus 3 squared squared, or really I've got t squared minus 3 to the power of 4. I notice I can do a little bit of canceling now. I notice that I have t squared minus 3 as a factor in the top, and I've got t squared minus 3 as a factor in the bottom, so the t squared minus 3 in the top can cancel with one of the ones in the denominator. And then now I'm, I'm almost finished. I just want to clean up and write down what I've got. So inside my little brackets that I've got here, I have a 3t squared minus 2t squared, which is a t squared. I have a minus 9 minus 1, which is a minus 10. And there we go. We've got our derivative done, and it was a little quotient rule, but with some chain rule built inside of it. Okay, let's do another one. This one is uh, involving sines and cosines and square roots. Um, so again, I can see a couple of things going on here. Number one, I can see that I've got a product, so there'll be a product rule. But I also can see that I've got some chain rule going on. Sine squared, that squaring is the outside function, sine is the inside, cos cubed, cube is the outside function, cosine is the inside. I have this square root, the root on the outside, the x squared plus 1 on the inside. So I guess I'm going to have a little bit of work to do here, finding my derivative. So product rule first, I'll have first thing as it is. Times derivative of the second, and I'll leave that as a big blank for now plus the second thing as it is, times the derivative of the first. And I'll leave that as a big blank for now. Okay, so let's start filling things in. The derivative of root of x squared plus 1. So the derivative of the square root, derivative of something to the half, half would come down, power would get reduced by 1, it would be power of negative a half, or in other words, square root in the denominator. So that's my taking the derivative of square root. And of course the inside hasn't been dealt with, so the inside is left alone for now. So it's 1 over 2 root of x squared plus 1. And now we'll do derivative of the inside. The derivative of x squared plus 1 is just 2x. Okay, so now let's take care of the, the second part of this. We have root of x squared plus 1 times the derivative of that first part. And so let's do that. For both of these, the power, both sine and cosine, the power is the outside function and the trig function is the inside one. So for sine squared, dealing with the squared first, 2 comes down, power is reduced by 1, leaving the inside as it is. Derivative of the inside, derivative of sine, that is cosine. And then for the second function, cosine cubed, we'll deal with the cubed first. Power comes down, power is reduced by 1, leaving the inside function alone. And then derivative of the inside, derivative of cosine is negative sine. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit of cleaning up here, and so one thing I can do right away is just cancel the 2 and the 2. So that means in the first term I've got root of x squared plus 1 times x, or uh, on the bottom at x times sine squared minus cosine cubed. And then for the second factor, or second term rather, I've got root of x squared plus 1. 
and I've got 2 times sine times cosine and I'll have plus 3 times cosine squared times sine. Okay, uh, maybe probably the only thing left that I would like to do is, uh, as far as simplifying goes, maybe turn this into one big fraction. Um, you'll notice I've got the first term is a fraction over root of x minus 1, and the second one is not a fraction, so you could sort of imagine it as being over 1. So if I were to take that second term and multiply top and bottom by root of x plus 1, or root of x squared plus 1, then the root of x squared plus 1 times itself, I would get rid of that root. And then that's kind of it as far as as much work as I feel like this one demands. Um, the only other thing that we really could do here is expand the top. That would give us six terms. Um, I don't think it would make it much nicer or much more useful. So I think this is probably where I would leave this one. Okay, so one last little example to work on. I've got a, a function. We want an equation of a tangent line. So we've done this. You've seen this is sort of a running theme, equations of tangent lines. Uh, so I know what I need to do is first I find myself on my point. And I find my point using the x value that I've been given. And that is pi over 4. And the y value, that's 2 times tangent cubed of pi over 4. Um, so we know tangent of pi over 4 is 1, so this is really 2 times 1 cubed, which is 2. So the point that we're passing through is the point pi over 4 and 2. As far as the slope goes, we know we're going to find the slope by using the, uh, the derivative of this function. And let's find the derivative. Uh, so for this one, dy dx, 2 is just a constant multiple, so we'll just leave that out front. And I'm going to have to deal with tangent cubed. For tangent cubed, cubing is the outside function, so first we'll have to deal with the cube. 3 comes down, power is reduced by 1 to 2, so I have 3 times tangent of x squared. And then derivative of the inside, derivative of tangent, is secant squared. So my derivative looks like it's 6 tangent squared secant squared. And so now let's get our slope. So what's our slope at pi over 4? Well, that's the derivative at pi over 4, and what do we get for that? Well, we know tangent of pi over 4, that's 1, and we know uh, secant of pi over 4, that's square root of 2. So we have 6 times 1 squared times root of 2 squared, which is 12. So there we go, we've got ourselves our slope of 12, and now we're ready to go. With our slope of 12 and our point, pi over 4, 2, well, I guess I will have to finish this off here. I'll create my line, my tangent line, y minus the y coordinate equals my slope times x minus the x coordinate. And so just a little bit of expanding and cleaning up. I'll have 12x minus 3 pi, and then bringing the 2 to the other side, so plus 2. There we go. That's the equation of my tangent line to that curve at x equals pi over 4.